Hello. Welcome. I've prayed many prayers when no answer came. I've waited patient and long. But answers have come to enough of my prayers. To make me keep praying. I don't know who authored those words. But I have kept it as my own. Prayer is the greatest privilege that the Christian has. Of all the privileges that God has given us. I am very convinced without a shadow of a doubt or argument. And there is nothing more powerful than to pray in the Spirit. But, not only is prayer our greatest Christian privilege. Prayer is also our greatest Christian service. Most of the time we think of prayer only as a means to get something from God or to get ready to serve God rather than as a means of serving God. We think when we pray then we can serve God better. But we are serving God when we pray. There are many people who say I cannot go out to witness. I cannot go on missions. I cannot sing in the choir. But you can pray wherever you are, can't you? You can stand in the gap for a family member or a friend, can't you? So you see, when you pray, you are in the service of the Lord. But unfortunately, prayer can also be the Christian's greatest failure. That is why we pray and pray, but our prayers are not answered. In Isaiah 1 5 we read, When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. That is quite ironic, isn't it? For God wants us to pray. And he wants to answer our prayers. And, yet God says he will hide his face from our prayers. And will not answer even though we pray many prayers. Why is this so? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Why are many of our prayers so fruitless? Why do we pray according to God's will? And yet our prayers are as if they do not reach the throne of grace. It is because we do not pray in the Spirit. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6:18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Jude 20 also talks about praying in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. James 4 5 adds. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the Scripture says, He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us? James is saying, I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit within us is very, very jealous of the cause of Christ. And, the scripture says over and over again, that God has given the Holy Spirit to us. And the Holy Spirit within us is there to glorify Christ and to promote the cause of Christ. What is the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us? He gives us strength where we do not have the strength to pray. Notice what Paul says in Romans 8 5-7. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed, it cannot. You have within you both a spiritual and a fleshy nature. And these two natures are always at war. Galatians 5:17 says. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So any time you attempt to pray, a battle begins between your spiritual nature and your fleshy carnal nature. Your carnal nature does not want to pray because your carnal mind is enmity against God. Have you ever wondered why it is so hard to pray? You say to yourself, I love God. 
I know I ought to pray and I want to pray. Suddenly, prayer becomes the hardest thing in the world for you. You realize that you have absolutely no desire to pray. When such a situation occurs, the carnal nature is taking control. There is a weakness in you. And that is where the Spirit comes in. Romans 8, 26 says. Likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In 2 Corinthians 12 9 God says. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In our moment of weakness in prayer, the Spirit of God strengthens us. So we can say with Paul, for when I am weak, then am I strong. There are six enemies that keep us from praying. The first enemy is indifference. Where you just don't feel like praying. It is like you have spiritual apathy, and have no desire to pray. How does the Spirit help us to overcome this apathy? Galatians 4 6 says. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba. Father. Because I am a son of God, God put the Spirit of His Son into my heart. And it is the Holy Spirit in me that cries out, Abba, Father. It is the Spirit in you, that will give you the desire to pray. The second enemy is ignorance. Romans 8 6 says. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Have you ever knelt down to pray and gotten up in frustration? Because you don't know what to pray for. But thank God, the Holy Spirit of God knows what you ought to pray for. Romans 8, 27 says. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The prophet Isaiah says this of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, Isaiah 11:2. The third enemy is impotence. That is our inability to pray. Have you ever tried to pray and then you get sleepy? You do not have the physical stamina, and the mental alertness to pray. You are like Peter, James and John who fell asleep in the garden after Jesus told them to watch and pray. The Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The Holy Spirit is the answer to such impotence. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you, Romans 8:11. The fourth enemy is interference. Sometimes when you kneel to pray, you are almost always interrupted by someone or something. Remember, when you get on your knees and begin to pray, the devil levels all of the artillery of hell against you. That is why you must at all times be in your spiritual armor. Because among your clothing is praying at all times in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, Ephesians 6:18. The fifth enemy is inexpressibility. These are times when we just can't find the words to pray. We can't find the vocabulary to praise God, to intercede for a loved one. There may even be times when we can't find the right words to plead. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, Romans 8:26. The sixth enemy is inaccessibility. These are times when we feel our prayers are simply not getting through to God. It is like our prayer is hitting a brick wall. It is like we cannot come into the throne room. Through the blood of Jesus, we have access to the Holy of Holies but it is the Spirit which gives us the power to come to the Holy of Holies. For through Him, we both have access in one Spirit to the Father, Ephesians 2:18. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of prayer. And, He helps us overcome the enemies of prayer, so we can pray. God bless you.